This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub, and specifically, it covers the content for Exercise 8, which is all about adding a service task to our existing workflow definition. So in this exercise, we're going to open the workflow definition up in our IDE. We're going to add a service task we're going to deploy the new version of the workflow definition, and then we're going to create a new instance of the workflow definition to see what it does with the features that we've defined in the service task. So let's get started. First of all, we need to reopen up our workflow definition, and we've been doing that using the SAP Business Application Studio. So I'm going to use the App Studio workflow dev space to open that up. And once I'm in there, I want to open up the order process workflow definition itself, which is this one here. OK, so far, so good. The graphical workflow definition editor gives us the ability to add certain types of tasks, user tasks, service tasks, script tasks or mail tasks. And it's a service task that we want to add here. So I'm going to select a service task and add it to the workflow. I'm just going to collapse the Explorer so we can see things better. Now notice that uh, we have this sort of triangle warning decoration and that's a sign to tell us that there are some properties that we need to specify in the particular service task instance that we've just created here in the workflow definition. So we can do that now. We'll go over to the details tab of the service task definition and it's asking us for a destination. The whole idea of a service task is that we can get a workflow definition to make remote HTTP calls. Now, what we're going to be pointing to from a destination perspective is the shop info destination that we created in a previous exercise in this virtual event. Now, just flipping back to my SAP Cloud Platform cockpit to have a look at the destinations, we can see the destination that we set up in a previous exercise, that's the shop info destination, which is using an on-premise proxy type, i.e. an SAP Cloud Connector supported connection to point to our ES5 so-called on-prem system via the virtual ES5 name. So flipping back to the service task properties, I'm going to move this down a little bit more so we can see everything. We can specify here the shop info destination. Now uh, we leave the chooser service from to others. The other possibility there is SAP API Business Hub, but we're going direct to a destination that's defined in our trial sub account. Now, where do we want to go? Bearing in mind that the, the URL defined in the destination ends with the actual name of the OData service, EPM ref apps shop serve. Whatever we specify here gets appended to that URL. So that's why we want here the product entity set. And specifically, actually, we're going to be asking for a particular product. We're going to be implying through the use of the key specified through this request ID variable here in the context, we're going to be asking for a specific entity. So this is going to be a read, effectively, rather than a query. Notice as well, as it says here, that we do need, for the time being, to specify the client here in the URL, because right now the additional property is not supported by the service tasks. So the rest of the properties here, we need to make sure that the, the HTTP method is get, of course, because we're going to be doing a read. And I guess most importantly to understand is that we need to specify somewhere in the context for the data retrieved through that HTTP request to be saved. So we were, we're saying here, using this expression, that we want to, the data to be saved in a node within the context where that node is called product info. OK, so let's just make sure everything's saved. Everything should be saved anyway, automatically. And that's it. So now it's time to build and deploy the workflow definition. At the moment, if we have a look through our 
trial sub account home. If we go to trial, we can get to our Fury Launchpad site, to our app router based app here. Let's just have a look at the workflow de definition as it stands. We've got our order process definition and notice that the version is version one. So let's go back to our IDE and use the MBT build tool. So rather than right click on the YAML file to uh, build uh, the MTA from there, we're gonna use the command line. Uh, for that, of course, we need to be in the order flow directory. As we can see here, we should be able to now see the YAML file. Yep, there it is. So we can just say MBT build. And that's it. And as before, as we saw in the previous exercise, the build is fairly quick because there's not much going on here. Once we've done that, of course, we can see that a new order flow MTAR file has been created. There, 754, which is right now. So let's now deploy that with the command where we've seen before, CF deploy MTA archives order flow MTAR. This will upload the MTAR and perform the deploy operation. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything that's going on. Okay, so that's complete. So now let's pop over to the monitor workflows again, and we can refresh this, and we can see that the version of the order process workflow definition has now been bumped up to two. Okay. We can try out this new version of the order process workflow definition using Postman. We've got our workflow collection, and we've got a very uh, convenient way of creating a new workflow instance, starting a new instance. So let's switch over to Postman and let's just use our create new workflow instance request to make a new request. Now in this case, we can see here that we're expecting to make the same request for HT100325. Let's just change that anyway to 26. And let's have a look at the response. We can see we have a 201 created and the instance of the workflow definition that we've just started is currently running and it has an ID starting 00AC. So let's flip back now to the, the order process workflow definition and have a look at the instances. We can see already that again, there's none in the list, which means that the instance is either cancelled or completed. So let's select everything. And we can see 8.57, that's local time here. The order process definition ID, the instance ID 00AC is exactly the instance that we saw in Postman in the results. And we can see here, and as it's shown in the documentation of this exercise, we can see here that rather than just have the context that we specified, we've now also got a product info node and the contents of that product info node are the contents of that particular product entity from the OData service in our backend ES5 on-prem system that's been retrieved via the service task using the destination that points to the remote URL and the connection is made via the SAP Cloud Connector. So that's it. We've now got a workflow definition that includes a service task that is fetching data from our remote on-prem service via the SAP Cloud Connector. Thanks for watching.